Hey everybody, Patrick from Crash Games here in our second of three uh, live vlog posts from Essen Spiel. Well, Spiel is sadly over, but I'm still in Essen and I'm here till Friday. And so tomorrow or Thursday, um, I'll record the third and final uh, vlog post from Essen. <laughs> Hashtag Eurobrain. Um, not getting a lot of sleep, so my brain is working at a different pace, and um, just wow, Spe Spiel was awesome. And uh, please don't leave comments of, of whether I said Spiel right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's it. Um, and so that is what it is. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. I'm going off on a totally unnecessary tangent. So here I am. Um, it is miserable and rainy outside today. I'm going to flip the camera around for a minute and, and let you see. I don't know if you can see uh, just how miserable it is out there, but it's pretty, it's pretty bad. So today is definitely a good day to be, to be inside. Um, I started out today, uh, it wasn't raining, and I started out today meeting up with Brig. Uh, he is one of the buyers from Card Kingdom in Seattle, and he was around a bit later. He was supposed to shove off to Paris today, but his train to Paris uh, was on strike in Belgium. So, and the train just got done striking here in, in Germany, and we'll talk about that here in a bit because it definitely had an impact on, on Spiel. Um, but he is shoving off tomorrow morning, but he stuck around today. So we had a great time. Um, we went over to the Museum Folkwang, and I'm probably saying that wrong, but it was phenomenal. They had a, a Japanese art um, a set up, and that's from September through January, so it's, it's not a permanent uh, exhibit, and it was amazing. Wow, definitely, definitely worth, worth going to. Um, so, uh, and that was Brig and, and Maggie talking about doing that yesterday, but I guess the museum was closed, so he wanted to do it today. I'm like, I wanted to do that, so I tagged along, and it was well worth the experience. Um, found some great, great art. Uh, didn't didn't buy it, he just was looking at it. They have some iconic uh, paintings there by, by Vincent van Gogh, or Go, as I call him, and um, some great stuff by Monet, some iconic, iconic um, paintings from Monet, and this really awesome um, French artist, and I'm gonna have to look up his name, and I'm probably not gonna say it right, that I absolutely fell in love with. There was a Japanese artist that I fell in love with, his stuff, uh, Yutagawa Hiroshi, or Hiroshige, and um, Henry Riviera, or Riviera, um, I'm not sure, but a couple of their stuff I'm actually gonna be looking into, and, and some fantastic inspiration there. Um, none of that has to do with, with board games, though, but I thought I'd get that, get that out of the way because that was a cool experience uh, to, to have, and I thought I'd share that with, with all of you guys. So if you're ever in Essen and you arrive a day early or a day late and you have the chance to, to go to that museum, uh, do so. That particular exhibit won't be there, um, but it was, it was good. So cool. Okay, enough rambling about the museum. Um, how was this in Spiel for Crash Games? What a whirlwind. Um, I don't even know where to start, so I guess I'll start at the beginning. But first, before I get into that, I have a huge announcement to make, and I'm gonna make it here live on, on the Crash Games vlog. And uh, the announcement is Crash Games will be sponsoring a contest um, that is open for female-identified game designers to design a micro game and the uh, best game received uh, will be published by Crash Games. Now, I don't know how many are gonna be submitted, and uh, so that, that may or may not impact uh, the game design contest. Like if it were a situation, if I get two, and I don't feel that they're, they're published worthy, then I'm not simply going to publish a game on, on novelty. The game has to be good. And so let me kind of explain uh, some of the parameters of the contest and why I, I want to run this contest. Um, during, during the fair, um, some friends of mine and I were out at dinner, uh, and a buddy of mine, Gordon, and I were out at dinner. He was helping out at the Crash Games booth. And I had brought up a topic of conversation of if we were terraforming a new planet, the conversations that geeks have, right? 
uh, if we were terraforming a new planet um, and we only had 10 seats on the spaceship, uh, and we were fleeing the Earth, and there's only 10 seats on the spaceship for game designers, which I think is a lot of seats. But nevertheless, apparently on this rocket ship, the game designers are, are allotted 10, 10 seats. Then who would we, who would we put on there? And, um, and I, I don't know how the conversation came up simultaneously, but we were also talking about uh, Gamergate in the video game world and how disgusting um, the troubles that are going there, how, how disgusting those are. And um, I started having, having difficulty of thinking of the games in my collection, how many are designed by, uh, by women, by identified females or, or people that identify as female. And I couldn't think of any, and that really bothered me. And then I started thinking about Gamergate, and that bothered me even more. And I said, I want to do something about this. Um, so the contest is specifically for uh, individuals that identify as female, and it is specifically a micro game uh, contest, and those are the parameters. And um, there's a lot of subjectivity on what counts as a micro game. And so I'm wanting the designers that are entering that contest to use the box of Council of Verona um, or Yardmaster Express. Um, not many people have seen the Yardmaster Express box, but using the Council of Verona box as, as the parameters and minimal, minimal components. Um, I'm not gonna have a component uh, count or type, but it must fit in that box uh, and it can't weigh it down like a brick. So <laughs> no, uh, no lead pieces uh, will be made. And so then I got to talking with other people and their thoughts and ideas because I wanted to bounce the contest off because it's important to me to know that this is not a, a PR move. This is not a, uh, hey, look at me, look at me thing. It's simply me trying to write what I perceive as an injustice and I can do something about it. So I, I feel like I should. And then I got to talking with Rory O'Connor from Rory Story Cubes, a good friend of mine. I, I love seeing him. Um, and I've really gotten to know him a lot over the last, you know, couple years. And we started talking about some of the game designers uh, that we do know of um, that are women like uh, Colleen McCarthy, uh, Peggy Brown, uh, Mary Jo uh, Ruder. And I don't know if I'm saying that wrong, so my apologies if I mispronounce anyone's name. Um, and then I know uh, Kim Vandenbroek uh, on Twitter. And um, I've never had the pleasure of meeting her, but I know that she and I talk um, back and forth occasionally on Twitter and Mary Cousin as well. So, um, but upon doing a, a bit of research on, on all of those designers, I didn't see a lot of strategy games, which is fine. I saw a lot of, a lot of kids games and a lot of family games, but I want to know why there aren't any, any, or I shouldn't say there aren't any, I want to know why there isn't more uh, female strategy game designers. So. That's, that's the purpose of the contest. Um, I'm sure that I'll probably catch some flack over it. Um, I don't care. It's something that, that I think needs to be done and I think it's interesting. And I'm really excited uh, to evaluate uh, the games as they come in. Um, I guess I should put a time parameter on it. Um, I don't really, really know when I would stop receiving them, but I don't want the time parameter to be uh, crazy tight. So. Um, the holidays are, are fastly coming upon us. So I think I'm going to say um, through, through January of next year. So that should give everybody, um, or through February, let's say February. Yeah, you can tell I've totally planned this portion of the contest out. Um, I've actually been thinking about this for the last four or five days, but I've been uh, consumed with, with the fair and all that, you know, going on. So... I want to say through February, so let's let's say that, yeah, because then that gives everybody a time to get through the holidays, and um, but they can work on it over the holidays, so that gives us a solid, um, what, one, two, three, four months, four and a half months uh, for people to submit it, and then uh, we'll go from there, so definitely stay tuned to that, because I'll be touching on that um, in future blog posts about the entries coming in and how that all looks, so good luck, and I can't wait to see... Uh, what you get um, look up our website on the crash games website for submissions um, and just in case so you have it right here uh, the address is crash games LLC 3235 South Dodge Boulevard Tucson Arizona 85713 
And again, you can pull that off of the contact page on the crashgamesaz.com website. So good luck. I can't wait. Um, okay, so that was the big news. And moving on to how things went for the fair. Um, things went really, really, really great. And uh, lots, of, lots of things to talk about. And it's going to be very difficult for me to keep this um, time sensitive. I always like these posts to run between 20 and 30 minutes. And um, just so you know, uh, part three will be what games I bought and why, and what games I, I received and, and, why, and why I will be taking them back home. I'm not leaving anything. If someone was kind enough to gift me a game, I'm going to take it and I'm going to play it. And um, I, w I had to reject some games just because I, I simply ran out of suitcase room. I had plotted out the suitcase and I'm like, oh, I would love this gift. And it's so awkward to be like, mm, I don't have any more room left in my suitcase. And then they, I would love to gift them a game. And then there was the awkwardness of um, I'm selling these, but I haven't sent them out to Kickstarter backers. So I don't want to simply give them away to just, to just anyone. Um, and trying to do the gift reciprocation and then the awkwardness of they want the game and then they want to want to pay for it it was it was one of the more awkward awkward parts of the fair um not not fun but what are you gonna do <laughs> so um shoot so that'll be part three part three is I'll, I'll take you through and i'll do that in my hotel room so we don't have the people walking by but the light down here in the lobby is is really good and um, the Wi-Fi seems to be a bit stronger in the lobby, and so um, that wouldn't have anything to do with the recording, but I don't make sense, people. You know this by now, so <laughs> I'm in the lobby. I'm not sure why. I have my water down here, and it's a nice table, and it's, it's nice to sit at, and it's comfortable, and, and I like watching people come and go. And I think kind of being around people is, is neat, too, so I don't have a good reason. Okay. So part three, I'll record that before I leave and definitely upload it before I leave. So stay tuned for that. Um, so the fair, how did it go? Well, um, it was awesome. Um, last year at Essen, I had not explored so much around me. Um, warm up day was phenomenal. It is in a really cool building. That's, um, that was on Wednesday. Uh, oh, and I'll jump back to that. I'm, I'm having Euro brain and I'm not doing things in the order I want, so my apologies. Um, so what happened? So Monday we got into the fair, uh, and uh, the company that I used to, to rent furniture and set everything up from was really, really busy. I'm one of 18 clients, and I'm sure I'm their smallest. And in fact, they let me know that. I don't think they intended it to be a dig, but it was like, thanks for letting me know that I'm your smallest client. I'm like, okay. So I didn't take it personal. I know there's so much that's lost in, in cultural translation. It, it didn't bother me. Um, so that got all set up on Monday, and uh, the games were delivered uh, on Tuesday, I believe. And so put the booth together, had plenty of time to do that. And then I definitely didn't have a big enough booth. Um, that I had the two by five square meter booth, and I was in hall two. Um, which is the less popular of the three halls, but they actually opened up Hall 4 this year. So that would have, I think, been the least popular hall. And so I was a bit worried about Hall 2. And moving forward, I think I will try to either slightly improve my location. I would say that I probably had, like, the second best location in Hall 2. Um, the best location would have been in between the doors that come in from Hall 1, and it's also on the pathway to Hall 3. So if I was going to be in Hall 2, that would have been the booth to have, but um, I was right next to that booth, and I was on a corner. I did pay extra for that, so I wasn't terribly upset about my location. Um, I had the option of getting a booth in Hall 3, but I think that would have been a bad location in Hall 3. It was bigger, too, and it was more expensive, and having never exhibited at this fair... Um, I wanted to mitigate uh, financial risk as much as possible, particularly since I knew that I would be spending a lot to get here. Um, so, yeah, so got everything set up Tuesday, and then Wednesday was Essen warm-up day, and that was a fantastic event. It's not directly related to the fair um, or sponsored by the fair or anything like that. It's simply an event, and the people that, that put it on are, are fantastic. I, never, I didn't have the chance to meet them, and I wish I would have. But it's in this super cool space. It's about a, a five to seven minute walk from my, my hotel here, Motel One, which is on the town square. And it was right next to a huge mall. Um, it was not far at all. And it's this really cool, like, 
co-op artsy building where there was like a restaurant and a coffee house down below and then like six floors of like these little spaces and there was like a little art studio oh my neck is killing me sorry uh, this little art studio in one of the spaces and they had like a rooftop thing it totally dug the space and for 25 euros um, you got to come in and play games all day and they fed you all day and there were unlimited like soft drinks and tea all day and um, unfortunately I didn't get there till about like three o'clock because the product didn't arrive in the booth until Tuesday and I wanted to do that on Monday but um, it just worked out to where I did it on Tuesday um, so that was just fantastic um, the food was great uh, I met a lot of cool people there shout out to uh, Rindert and uh, Karina my uh, friends from the Netherlands, uh, Karina's from Romania, but they live in the Netherlands and they became really good friends. We hung out with them quite a bit uh, during the show and after the show. Um, and I love making, making new friends. It's one of the best parts about, you know, traveling to these shows is, is meeting new people. This is such a cool industry to be in, particularly if you're a people lover like, like I am. So um, it was really neat too because you had like some small publishers there and some not so small publishers like that were showing off their new games. Nothing was being sold at Warm Up Day. It was simply a time to get together and play. Um, so it was tough for me because it's like, well, I want to try to, you know, put out the new games, Yardmaster, Yardmaster Express, and Paydirt, um, and and I also want to play other people's games. But I actually was disciplined, and Gordon and I uh, took turns. I believe two games of Paydirt were played, about four games of Yardmaster and four games of Yardmaster Express. So lots of people got to preview those uh, ahead of the fair. So that was definitely neat. And um, it was just a good time. And so then the next day was obviously the start of, of Spiel. And wow, if you've never been, and this is my second year, so I was, I was prepared for the zoo that it can be. Um, if you've never been, it is an absolute rush on that first day of everyone trying to get their, their must-haves, their, their gotta-buys. And so for about a solid hour, the, I was very flattered and honored that the Crash Games booth was busy nonstop. It was sell, 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 sell. And um, we didn't uh, actually sell out of anything at the fair, um, but I'll explain that. We came really close to selling out of Pater. Pater almost sold out. But what had happened with Pater, and I hadn't had a chance to share this with the uh, with the Kickstarter backers yet, but what happened at pay, with Pater was 100 copies were sent on the last boat to Essen, and um, it was held up by Chinese customs, which meant that the copies of Pater weren't going to get here. Um, so I made the decision to then airship those in, which cost, I don't even want to talk about what that cost, um, thousands of dollars, and because only five fit in a case, and it's about 100 bucks um, a case to airship. And so um, the second 100 copies of Pater actually showed up on Friday. So that Pater didn't sell out because the extra 100 copies showed up. And I sold about 100 copies. So it, it almost sold out. I think we were like five copies short, but we didn't. We didn't sell out of anything. Um, Yardmaster Express uh, sold really well, as did Yardmaster. Um, probably moved, uh, I think, my final count were just uh, over uh, 100 copies each, somewhere between 100 and 150. I have the counts written down hastily on, on uh, cardboard. <laughs> I've just been in recovery mode. And so um, it was great getting to meet people. I spent um, a good amount of time apologizing to backers um, and thanking them for their understanding of me selling at Essen. Any backer that came up and told me they were a backer, I apologized, I thanked. And I gave them a pair of, of crash dice in, in appreciation uh, for their understanding and support. Um, and let them know that the games are being loaded on the boat right now. I believe they're already on the boat in transit. So it looks like our end delay is really only going to be uh, two to four weeks. I'm hoping more on the two side than the four side um, so that I can get everybody's games out before BGG Con. Um, it's really important to me that all of you that are my backers know that if the games don't arrive in time... Um, to send them out to you before BGG Con, I won't be selling them at BGG Con. I'll be staying home, possibly missing BGG Con, if I need to be there to send everything out. Um, I'm feeling pretty good, knock on wood, that um, I'll be able to get all the time, the games out to you in time, and um, be able to sell at BGG Con because all the backers will have their stuff. So that's what I'm hoping for, 
and I'll be using, I believe, Attack here in Germany for um, EU and worldwide customers for Kickstarter fulfillment. So I'm trying to set that up over the next couple days. I wanted to give Attack some time off because they were tearing down all the booths yesterday, and I'm sure they're wrapping that up today. So I'll touch base with them uh, before I leave. Andy and Melanie and all the awesome people. I'm forgetting the other two guys' names uh, at Attack, but what a phenomenal, phenomenal company to do business with. Very happy. Um, so, yeah, uh, Gordon and I just demoed like crazy. Um, we ha always had, I needed a bigger booth because I needed to have, there were multiple people. We often had a crowd watching at our booth while Pater was demoed. Um, and I didn't play a full game with anybody, but I would take people through a round or two so they could see how it worked. Basically like an explanation round and then a game round. And then the interesting thing at I guess here in, in, in Germany or Europe is that some people um, would just plop down and start playing and they would get up when they were darn good and ready to <laughs> and thank me and not buy the game and leave. And that's okay. I mean, I, I don't want or expect every, I want every person to buy the game. I don't expect every person to buy the game, but some people were like sitting down at the booth and it was awkward and weird because... What do I say? Please get up and leave and buy the game or just please leave? No, I'm not rude like that. And this is not my home country. And I don't know all of the cultural nuances. Not to mention that everybody that sat down wasn't German. I had Italian people. I had people from Spain. I got to meet people from all over the world and play uh, crash games with games with people from all over the world. And I cannot tell you how happy that makes me, like how exciting that is for me. And so, yeah, I just kind of went with the flow. And um, that was that. But I definitely could have ran double games um, of everything. And then one interesting thing is that Ferdy had, um, who I licensed Council of Verona to, Ferdy is a French company, and they had the French version of Verona, uh, which is called Verone. And then they had licensed that to Heidelberger um, in German, and, and Heidelberger had some copies of the German version of Council of Verona, and I believe it was called um, Brat... Uh, von der von, von Verona. I'll have to see. I'll show you tomorrow when I show you the game so you can see the box and all the games that I bought, even though I didn't buy those. And tomorrow I'll give you a full blown preview of the collector's edition by Ferdy. Oh my gosh, did it come out beautiful? You guys have no idea. Wait till, wait till you see that. So, um, yeah, so it went great. Um, it was, it was an awesome experience, and I can't wait to do it again next year. Um, the reality of what happened is that I sold enough to pay for the trip, and that's good. I did not make a profit here at this trip, and I was really hoping that I could. Um, I believe there are a couple things that impacted this. Um, nobody knows me over here, I think, is number one. So they don't have the trusted quality of the components in the gameplay. Um, number two, what I think the biggest factor was, um, was there was a train strike here in Germany. And the workers, from what I know, and again, this is all secondhand information, this isn't factual, the, the workers were striking to work less hours and be paid more money. They just want to live the dream, I guess. Um, they were intentionally striking during uh, Spiel um, because they knew how big the fair was and they knew that that would negatively impact the fair. Um, which in turn would, I guess, affect the politics here. And I, the strike, I believe, ended, and I believe they got what they want. I'm not sure, but I know the strike is over. Um, but a lot of people were saying that the attendance was down, particularly the, the pinch was felt on Saturday. So kind of how the sales went for me, Crash Games, uh, here at Spiel, where Thursday were my biggest sales. Friday was about half of Thursday. Uh, Saturday, which was the big surprise, because I thought a lot of people would come in, was... Half, is half of Friday sales, and then Sunday was the same as Saturday. So um, that was interesting to see that because I definitely was curious how that would all shake out. Um, but that's how the sales went. And then um, the third reason, I believe, is being in Hall 2. Um, I don't know how much that affects it because in Hall 3, I think it's very distracting. You've got all the big booths there. You've got Cosmos, AEG, Pegasus Spiel, uh, Hurricane, all the real asthma day days of wonder all the really big publishers um are in there japan brand is in there stronghold is in there and then you have hall one a uh, hall one had like bezier heidelberger 
um, had some Han Zimgluck stuff, but Han Zimgluck was, had a play space in Hall 1, and I think their main buying space was in Hall 3. So I think hall, being in Hall 2 impacted that as well, but I don't have any metrics to compare that to. Next year, I will definitely try to get into 1. Um, I don't know if I would take 3. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know the layout better, and I'm going to study that a bit more. Um, and so we'll see. We'll see next year. It'll be really interesting to see how next year um, shakes out. So yeah, that was that was my time. I had a great time. Gordon and I definitely needed a third employee or a third volunteer, and um, I think that may have impacted things as well, as well as the the lack of multiple tables. I needed multiple tables running Peter. I needed multiple tables running uh, Yardmaster and Yardmaster Express, um, and so uh, Verona I feel did really good despite the fact that two unique language dependent versions of it were being sold and at a, at a cheaper price or a less expensive price I should say um, so that was that was uh, interesting but I particularly when factoring that in I feel Verona sold really well I think I sold about a hundred copies of, of Verona as well I expected to sell more but I think the the price um, and the fact that if you were a native German speaker the fact that you could get it in German or the fact that you could get it in French impacted that so yeah that was how it went I paid for the trip so I'll definitely be back next year and um, I think I'll do it better next year and um, just had uh, I can't I can't emphasize how great of a time I had uh, playing games with everybody and making new friends it it's the best part of, of this it is so great and even though I'm exhausted um, and I have just an insane amount of work waiting for me when I get back um, next Monday. I'll, I'll go home on Friday and I'll land on Saturday and I'll rest up and get my body used to the being back home again and the time change because it's the opposite schedules here. It's nine hours ahead of Arizona here in Germany so whenever I'm going to bed my wife is waking up. When I'm waking up my wife is going to bed. So that's that's been a little chaotic. I need to do better with that next year whether that means getting a sim card or um, FaceTime was my plan to communicate with the family back home, and it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. Um, so I need to I need to figure that out better for next year. But I'll definitely be back next year, uh, stronger than ever. <laughs> so um, that's how Spiel went. So uh, just wrapping things up a bit here. I'm trying to think if there's really anything else that that I wanted to touch on. Um, I'm really enjoying my time here in Essen. Uh, next year, I think I'll do a bit more traveling outside of Essen or outside of Germany even. Um, but I didn't have time to really set that up, so I took in the museum today. Um, I'm going to go visit the epic, I guess they have an epic coal mine here. And I think I'll go visit that. And then there's some other thing that I, I wanted to see. But I think if I can do just the coal mine in the museum, that'll be good. I have got a lot of packing to do, and I have the most epic game of Tetris to play with my suitcases. And you'll see that tomorrow. Um, or Friday or Thursday, whenever I record the part three of this this vlog, live vlog from Essen, um, you'll see all the games that I bought, which will be fun to do. It'll take you through, and you'll be like, Patrick has a really weird criteria for buying games. That you will know after tomorrow. So, uh, so long from, from Essen, Germany, and uh, play some more games, people. What are you doing watching this? Go play some games. Bye, everybody. <laughs>